Thank you, Dr. Kraft. Our spec second speaker this evening will be Apollo 11 Lunar Module Pilot, Dr. Buzz Aldrin. A West Point graduate, Dr. Aldrin joined the Air Force in 1951, flew combat missions in Korea, and then earned his doctorate in astronautics from MIT in 1963. He dedicated his dissertation, and I want to quote this, to the crew members of this country's present and future manned space programs. If only I could join them in their exciting endeavors. He soon did, becoming a NASA astronaut later that same year. His successes flying Gemini 12 and as the lunar module pilot for Apollo 11 cemented his place in history. With a long career in public life, Dr. Aldrin continues to be an active figure, lending his experience and his energy to books, conferences, documentary films, and even this year, recording a music video with rapper Snoop Dogg. <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Buzz Aldrin. Somebody was going to put a slide up there that I was going to dazzle you with. <clears throat> it will be on www.buzzaldrin.com. And I know that it's a little daunting to, uh, to view progressive ways into the future. Uh, I volunteered to talk about the future. That's not the only thing I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> But that's what I have really always been looking at. What can we do that's a little bit better? And I'm going to leave this up for just a couple of seconds. And then later on, it's going to come on when I begin to talk about a few things <clears throat> that, are, that are on this. Uh, and then maybe, uh, if I don't talk too long, uh, we might get to look at it again. We are here. And I think that we can be here uh, from the Wright brothers and Kitty Hawk to Tranquility Base was 66 years. From Tranquility Base, 66 years in the future takes us to 2035. I believe we deserve to do a little bit more than footprints on the moon. And I believe that there is a timeline. There are many of them, but I believe we can do that. Yes, we can. Can you turn off the slide, please? <clears throat> thank you, and good evening, everyone. I'd also like, of course, to thank the Smithsonian and my former colleagues for the opportunity to be with you all this evening. Four decades ago, have passed since Neil, Mike, and I traveled across the blackness of space to win a peaceful race. It was then, and still is today, an honor and a privilege to be a part of Apollo 11 and the entire Apollo program. Tonight you may well ask, what did it mean that America was first on the moon? And what can America do next in space to build upon that long ago achievement. Apollo 11 was about exploration, about taking risks for great rewards in science and engineering, about setting an ambitious goal before the world, and then finding the political will and the national means to achieve it indelibly impress, impressed upon our nation's memory the voyage of Apollo still seem incredible. We are inspired by the magnitude and teeming efforts of people from all walks of life, from industries big and small, who worked in tandem to attain a long-term goal of magnificent achievement. While Neil and I put on the lunar surface with Mike orbiting above, Supporting the three of us were hundreds of thousands of American workers 
who comprise what may be called the greatest team ever assembled. They are often overlooked at a time like this, so I would like to pause tonight and look backwards, not through the eyes of a lucky pilot and astronaut, but through the eyes of these hardworking Americans, the scientists and engineers, metallurgists and meteoroid, meteorologists, policymakers and flight directors, navigators and suit testers, and all those in the shop floor such as the seamstress who stitched the 21 layers for each custom-tailored spacesuit. We cannot ever adequately thank them for committing their lives and professional energies, minds and hearts, to this mission and to the other Apollo mission. Tonight, while we think about missions past and future, I also want to think about and thank those without whom we would never have walked on the moon. Ed White, Roger Chaffee, Gus Grissom. The Americans who came, committed, believed, and conquered the unknowns with us. Apollo 11 was also about leadership. We are moved by a young American president who challenged himself and all of us to think boldly and not retreat from our vision of what we could do in space. The path that John F. Kennedy inspired us to choose was not easy. In fact, it was very hard. But it served the betterment of America and ultimately the ending of the Cold War. All of these lessons are worth learning anew today in the difficult times we face together. I believe that bold achievements in space not only reflect our country's greatness, but beckon us to discoveries that can improve our lives on Earth. I also believe that national leadership and a coming together of the American people are the ingredients that make overwhelming obstacles possible. This was how progress was achieved 40 years ago. This is how we can rise from our challenges today. Apollo 11 is a symbol of what a great nation and a great people can do if we work hard, work together, and have strong leaders with vision and determination. That is what Apollo 11 means to us today, to me today, realizing the dream of exploration by way of determination. What we did 40 years ago was a great mission of exploration. Tonight, I'd like to share with you a glimpse of where we can go in the next 40 years if only we are willing to be truly bold. The best way to honor and remember all those who were part of the Apollo program is to follow in our footsteps, to boldly go again on a great new mission of exploration. If our leaders are as wise today as President Kennedy was in our time, a strong and visionary space program can once again inspire us to great achievement. My mission vision for the future of the space program is very much in keeping with our Apollo tradition. But this time, instead of a moon race, we can help make the moon a true stepping stone to more exciting and habitable destinations, with the moon acting as a new global commons for all nations. We can venture outward to Mars for America's future. It may sound like a distant destination beyond our reach, but that's what some called Apollo's goal to reach the moon. And they were wrong. Let me share with you where I think America must go in space during the next half century. Come travel with me on a journey of the imagination. It begins in Earth orbit, where America's spacers have opened up the space ways to adventure travel for hundreds of ordinary folk. It builds upon the great International Space Station, which has become an orbiting research center 
and laboratory for all nations, and including India, China, South Korea, and all other nations that aspire to explore space. We travel to Earth's orbit aboard a new reusable spacecraft, successors to the magnificent space shuttle fleet, multi-purpose, international, and commercial ships capable of runway landings and a variety of other missions. We test long-duration life support exploration modules at the space station, combine them with Orion-type crew modules for missions that cycle back and forth between the Earth and the Moon, and then station in the lunar vicinity to act as communication relays, man-tended, and to serve as refueling depots, not just in low Earth orbit, one would be there, but at the libration point close to the Moon. We fly by comets and intercept asteroids with dual missions for redundancy. The comets have names like Virtanen, Hartley 3, and the Earth-threatening near-Earth object Apophis, swinging by in 2011, in 2023, and in 2029, pretty damn close. And if it just goes the right place in Friday the 13th of April, 2029, Apophis. Is that right, Rusty? Apophis. Okay, sorry. It might impact us in 2036, right after we've landed on Mars. 40 years ago, the name of the Lunar Seas, Tranquility Base, Ocean Storms, became a part of America's vocabulary. In our future, so will the name, names like Apophis and other near-Earth objects. As we look out from our ship, we see the golden tail of an ancient comet filled with the material of the birth of our galaxy. We sweep to the surface of an asteroid, developing tools and equipment to sift its rocky soil and discover what the building blocks of the universe are made of, and then bring it back to our home world for study. Step by step, just as Mercury and Gemini and Apollo made Apollo possible, made the landings possible, we move deeper into space for several manned landings on Phobos, the inner moon of Mars, all in a prelude to our historic mission to homestead the red planet itself. Such bold missions of exploration will require determination, support, and political will, as did our mission to the moon four decades ago. We have the vision. We can reach these destinations on the pathways to Mars within the next two decades. And if we preserve, persevere the pathways, we can reach Mars itself before that 2035, 66 years after Tranquility Base, which was 66 years after Kitty Hawk. To realize the dream of humans on Mars, we need a unified vision. We need to focus on pathways to the prize. Even now, Russia and China and France will soon embark on a Phobos soil sample return mission. Share the soil sample with the French by agreement. The greatest challenge for us is this. America, do you still dream great dreams? Do you still believe in yourself? Are you ready for a great national challenge? I call on the next generation and our political leaders to give this answer. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. A quarter of a million miles from where we are tonight on the dusty surface of our luminous moon are the traces of that first pioneering adventure. And we've just seen them on the films just brought back. Attached to the lunar lander, the eagle that brought Neil and me to the surface is a plaque with the words that can still be read today. It says, we came in peace for all mankind. Yes, we did. 
And yes, we will again. It was a great personal honor to walk on the moon, but as Neil once observed, there are still places to go beyond belief. My call is to the next generation of space explorers and their leaders. Isn't it time we continued our journey outward, past the moon? Thank you for listening to me, and may God always bless the United States of America. <laughs>